Welcome to the Hitchhike Hello Podcast, Episode 3, here with Uncle Vinny. Uh, as you guys know, on this podcast, we talk about your dreams, your plans, your purpose, and uh, we don't got it figured out, but we're driving down the road. If you're viewing today, that means you were hitchhiking, we picked you up, and we hope to take you to a place where you wanted to go. If we don't, that's your fault. You shouldn't have been hitchhiking and getting in the car with strangers. So as we get rolling, Benny, let's just uh, let them get to know you a little bit before we talk about where you're going. Let's talk about where, you're, where you've where you been. So tell me a little bit about, I know obviously your history for the most part. There's probably some things we'll learn about each other today that uh, that we didn't know before. But just tell me about, about your childhood. Where'd you come from? What was it like growing up as a kid? Uh, the whole story, give me all the good details, all the dirty details. <laughs> okay. Okay, about my childhood. Yeah. I come from a country. Yeah. Here in Kenya, we call Western. That's where I came from. Yeah. Then I got myself in Nairobi. So there's a, I come from Western. There's a village called Hasoko. Mm. That's where my grandfather, my grandmother, was staying back then. But they had to leave because of God's plan. So you lived with your grandparents. Yeah, at first I was living with my grandparents because my story is a bit complicated. Yeah, getting a phone call. None of these people know that you're busy. It's your grandmother. <laughs> yes, it uh, is. Your grandmother. <laughs> so Vinny is always on the phone and he's always disappearing. I said, Vinny, where are you going? Who are you talking to? He said, I'm going to see my <laughs> grandmother. <laughs> we'll let you guys put two and two together and figure out who his grandmother is. <laughs> Yeah, you get to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as I was saying, my my story is a bit challenging. Uh, I've I've been living with my grandparents for a long period of time because my father they separated with my mother when I was still a kid. I didn't get time. I didn't get that chance of living with both of my parents. Yeah. Yeah. They separated, so. So you're the only child. I'm only yeah the firstborn child for my mother. Okay. And my father. Okay. Yeah. Then. My father happened to go and marry. Happened to go and marry in the same family where his elder brother. So in our culture, uh, it's not allowed for two brothers to go and marry in the same family. Mm. So it was told that the younger brother supposed to leave the to leave the the marriage or to part. Oh. Or if we if it's them staying together, they have to leave the homeland, then buy somewhere else land so that they can stay. But I think by that time my father and my father didn't have money enough money maybe too. Mm to move to another place so it happened that they separated and since I was a kid I went with my mother I stayed with my mother like uh, was it for some months I lived with my mother for some months not more than not more than seven months yeah yeah then my aunt picked me the sister to my mother. What do you think made your aunt? Was it was it a struggle with your mother just trying to provide, or was it just a not good? What made you leave your I mother? I think it was a struggle for her to provide for me, because by that time maybe like I think she was not, she was not that good financially. Yeah. Then you know, her sister was now the elder sister. By that time, uh, the sister to my mother was working okay and we can say that he was a bit well off so he she decided to pick me uh, did she have kids yeah how many like five five kids and she took you in yeah she took me in that's um, a blessing that's a blessing that she she chose to you know you know he was he was just supposed to pick me because my mother and and her, mm. their sisters, yeah. and my my father, 
my father and the the knee that married my aunt now mm. they are again brothers you see yeah, they yeah. went and married in the same family yeah so maybe she felt for me she had just to pick me yeah because my mother was not good then i think i was told back then with my mother when i was born it's like my father was trying to deny that no i'm not that you aren't his kid yeah I was, wow. i was not his kid so do you look the same yeah we look the same <laughs> actually <laughs> In our tradition, <laughs> yeah, my mother had to bring me to had to bring me back at home where I come from, my dad's place. Mm. So I had to meet my grandmother and my grandfather when I was still young. So when they just looked at me, you know, you, yeah. it's, I don't know how those old people are able to mm. differentiate between this is ours yeah. and this is not ours. They just saw me. They talked to me then. My father was denying him by <laughs> no denying. <laughs> but my grandmother and grandfather said no. This is just your brother. There's no way you can. Yeah. Wow. So, was it, how old were you? I was still like. By that time, maybe I was like some months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you don't remember doing that? No, I don't remember. I just told uh, that story with my mother. So they had to give me a new name because we believe that the name, if someone gives you a name and you're still a child, then you keep on maybe being stubborn. You're just a small baby, but you're stubborn, you're crying, mm-hmm. what, what. You're not settled at night, you don't sleep, you always cry. So things like those are happening to me. So That's crazy. For me, like, there's so many, like... Like you guys call them taboo, yeah. or like tradition. Like there's so, or in the states we call it like superstition. Superstition. Yeah. yeah. So there's all the like I remember when that monkey pooped on Andrew's bed. Yeah. And said, "Come out on him that for the whole day you're cursed <laughs> because that monkey pooped on your bed." So it's, for me, coming into this culture, it's been really interesting to see all the things. Like if they separated, you have to change the baby's name because then. Yeah. Yeah, like that's. Do you believe that, or do you? No, I don't believe that. Yeah. That's what happened to me. I was just <laughs> told, but I don't. So, what was your that. original name? My original name was. Do I remember? There's a certain funny name that I was given yeah. that is not on my ID. Yeah. Yeah. So now your your full name is what? My full name is Vincent Musumba Wanzala. Wanzala. Wanzala Musumba. Wanzala. Musumba is my grandparents' name. Okay. Yeah. Then Wanzala is from the side of my mom. Okay. Musumba is from the side of my dad. Okay. Yeah. So at what age did you go to live with your grandparents? Uh, I went to live with my grandparents when I, when I was like nine, six, six okay. years, yeah. How was your how was the the village you lived in was it really poor was food or water hard to get because I know in some places up country like even water is very hard to find yeah from where I come from we don't have that issue of okay yeah maybe, obviously you're not skinny yeah <laughs> <laughs> those are big like this you know? <laughs> hey, we still have to measure who has the biggest biceps yeah you're the one delaying how <laughs> to, I know I can you can't beat me. I can beat you. I wish I had, if I had a tape measure, we would measure it. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll do it. We will. We will. Mm. So that was good that you were you were in a good area. So at what age did you decide I'm leaving the village? I'm I'm going to Nairobi. Yeah, it was on twenty nineteen. Okay. So you were how old? By that time, like what nineteen? Like, like I was like nineteen years. Mm-hmm. 1920 yeah almost 1920 there okay so I had to come to Nairobi to look to look for a job so that I can at least I can at least fulfill my wants my needs because mm. my life was that it was hard so what were you doing there I know at one point you said you were you were a bouncer in a bar. <laughs> 
So you're doing that, but then you also do plumbing work. Yeah. So be. at that time you were doing what? At what time? Like when you were in the village, you were doing what to, to provide? Like when I was in the village, I was trying to, you know, with plumbing, it was my, I had that passion of doing plumbing. So okay. back in the village, I would try to look for plumbers and try to work like for like the helpers. Yeah, yeah. I was like their helper, so I had to work with them at least to learn learn few things. Then it reached a time. I talked to my aunt. Then my aunt, you know, my father was just reluctant. I think he was not okay. I think he was like he didn't want to support me at all until now. So I talked to my aunt. My aunt had to go and call a meeting. With my dad, by that time my shosho was there, the mother to my father, but the grand grandparent was by the father, the, the dad to my father was not there. So they called a meeting, in that meeting there was my aunt, my father, my shosh, then my, the brother to my father now. It was a tough meeting. Oh, you were there? Because, no, I was not there. Oh, okay, okay, that's good. Yeah, I was, okay, when they left, my mother told me I'm trying to talk to your father so that he can be responsible because you are his dad. There's no way I'll be just doing everything. Yeah. And he's there. And when he switched, reached that point of maybe getting the fruits, you know, if you, you gave birth to a child, maybe when he grows, you expect, like, he will support you maybe when you get old. Yeah. So my my aunt was saying like that. Then they went when he, when he, she came back. She told me how things were tough. So you were uh, when they had that meeting. How old were you? Yeah, just big. I had finished form four. Form four. Yeah. So like now it was time for me to to go to the college. Yeah. So just graduated high school, and your father's not been apart at all. And now they're having a meeting to try and force him. And it did me. How did that make you feel? I felt bad. I was like, I wanted to cry because it's like, I I felt like I was lacking the parental love. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I think that one has been affecting me, but because I'm a man, and I try consoling myself. Yeah. <laughs> then I also like going to the gym. At yeah. least you know when I'm in the gym, I keep. Gym keeps stress away. Yeah, it clears your mind. Yeah, so many things were going. I was going through a lot. Yeah, for sure, for sure, and I can imagine. By that time, even I was not challenged. I was, I had, I, I didn't have that mindset of maybe using drugs. That's good. The only thing that came in my mind is maybe starting working out, mm. because I believed in the. At least emotional strong, <laughs> emotionally strong, <laughs> emotionally strong. Yeah. yeah, so that's how I was. So let me tell you how my mother, my aunt, and my father, and those people that I've mentioned, they were there. Before we go there, let's talk about the, the gym. So I know in Kenya, a lot of times people that, that don't have parents or don't have good parents, they turn to either drugs or, or robbing people. And you know they they're just these gangsters running around. What do you think it was about the gym that made you turn to the gym? Okay, the only thing that I had to turn for was the gym because mm -hmm. when I was living with my grandmother, my grandmother was like he was a Christian, mm -hmm. he was a believer, yeah, and he was taking care of me. And you know if you live with a a believer or a Christian or a pastor, you you know you have just <laughs> yeah, or else yeah, things will be busy. good. Yeah, so my mother will will tell you that you are the policeman of your own body. Wow. Yeah. In Kiswahili we say when you mm. you have to control yourself. Wow. And everything that gets inside your, your yeah. body. So. By living with my grandmother, I think it shaped me. So when such things that were, such things ha was happening, I tried to control it in a good way so that yeah. I can't find myself 
then also i had big dreams yeah yeah like what i had big dreams and still and still i still have them yeah like just being a great person being successful despite all those challenges that i was going through so i think in in kenya a lot of times people whenever they say they want to be successful they want to to drive a car they want to have a car like if you have a car you're successful or if you if you drive a Prado then you're very successful you know it's yeah. like depending on what car you drive measures success. your success mm. um so for you what do you what is your definition of success whenever you reach what point in life will you be able to say i've been successful like uh, just li- living a stable life yeah like uh, you're not begging you're not begging people for things like just being dependent yeah, you depend on yourself yeah yeah do you think that growing up because you went so long feeling kind of alone without a father it made you have that that mindset of like i'm going to I'm going to only depend on myself. I would imagine being a kid not having a father in the picture, not having the person who's supposed to take care of you taking care of you, then it would make you want to take care of yourself in a different way. Like cuz as a kid growing up my father always took good care of me. So I never had that mindset at a young age of I need to learn how to take care of myself. So You were saying with going back with your aunt, she came, she told you that it didn't go well at the meeting. And then after that, what was the next steps? So after that, uh I stayed like for some few months because even in that meeting it didn't end well because it reached a point where my aunt started throwing words in the with my dad because mm. is not responsible so then my grandmother was trying to be neutral she was trying to say like you people you are, you will give me pressure can you go out of this place because she was old then <laughs> she was suffering from pressure wow. and blood sugar how do you call it diabetes yeah yeah so that was her problem so my and the brother to my the sister to my father and my father started throwing words then my dad told my mom that my aunt that let let, let him let him let i can't remember well what my father like he was like let him be like that until he will let him stay like that until he will have brains is like i think maybe There's a point maybe we quarreled and he was pissed off with me because of he was, he was not responsible then I was feeling like you have to do this and this for me then by that time now now he said let him stay like that until I be, like I re- I realize that yeah how to face it but yeah until you realize what what his responsibilities really are yeah Till he realizes that I'm that he should show me respect. Yeah. Then But it's said, hard for a kid to show respect to someone who's not doing their part. You yeah. Know? Then he told my aunt that I will not take him to school. If you want to take him to, to take him to school, take him. Those are the last words that my dad told my aunt. Then my aunt left. So we I ke I we she came back then we stayed like three months then my father called now my aunt that where where do why do the child want to go to? where did the child want to go and learn felt pain though he he came and at least tried to be responsible but he didn't do it fully yeah so i went to look for a school back at home I find the school I took every details to him I uh, him and my aunt they tried to raise fees 
because he was saying that he's not financially stable though he was treating the other family well from a step mother so he went on to marry someone else yes of course and had more kids no he he only gave but she only gave back to so she only had one more kid one, yeah okay and but he was treating them good good then when, when it comes to my side he says that you know is not stable that's tough. so when i was in college i really suffered with life because yeah. by that time my my aunt thought that now my father has taken up this role uh. his role then but the truth was that he was not hmm? he will only pay for the house so he was telling her that he was taking care of you of me he so he told the woman that was taking care of you i'm going to take care of him and then, so she stopped and then he wasn't taking care of you mm. whenever i was going broke i would try to call her then you know someone sending you a hundred bob yeah to take you for the whole week yeah uh, that's what he was doing a hundred bob a hundred bob that's one dollar one dollar for for a whole week for a whole week i had to start to look for uh, some jobs yeah you can't live yeah, no way you can that. you can't live with a hundred bob no Hmm? Even Ugali is more than 100. <laughs> Ugali is more than 100. <laughs> yeah. Huh? So, with his mindset, he was thinking that when I have fla, I can only buy skuma wiki. Skuma wiki is yeah. you can get skuma wiki of 10 bob. Yeah. So he was doing like how can a, how can a human being live on skuma wiki daily? Yeah. Like today skuma wiki for 10 bob, tomorrow you get skuma wiki for 10 bob every day, lunch and supper think that was his mindset but uh, I don't think it was good so I suffered uh, until I finished and I think that also encouraged me to work hard yeah for sure class and also when I finished the school I knew nobody is for me I have to do it alone to make things work yeah do you think that's you think that's why you work so good now? Because let's be honest, sometimes in Kenya, the you hire someone and they they take the fast route, uh, they cut corners, they they try to cheat you. But the reason that you were hired here is because when you came, you do, you do exactly what you say you're going to do, and you it's like you take pride in your work. Yeah. It's not that I want to to cheat this person out of money. I want to whenever I leave to them to know I did a good job. Yeah, exactly. I think that one also encouraged me. Mm. And you know, I came I, I came to Nairobi knowing nobody. So I had That's scary. Nairobi's big. Nairobi's big. Yeah, actually. people don't realize how big Nairobi is. Uh, I came, I didn't know nobody. I didn't know anybody. I had to look for the job. So alone. your first day in Nairobi, you stayed where? I stayed in Embakasi. There's a place called Embakasi along Mombasa Road. Yeah. That's why I stayed like f- three months. What made you go there? Because I had to go there because I my nini, my cousin, mm-hmm. my cousin was living there. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I went to stay with him. Yeah. I, I asked him to stay with him. Yeah. For some time until I pick up then mm. I leave. So I stayed with him like three months trying to find a job. He was leaving to go f- for work. But I was just in the house. Hey, Benny. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you know, if you don't have a job, you can't wake up early, like six. So I was trying to. I was sleeping until eight or seven something. Yeah. Then I woke up. I tried and try to walk outside. At least find job, but it was really really hard. Yeah. Those three months were not easy for me. Yeah. Yeah. Then so shortly after that, you started doing small jobs yeah. for here? Yeah, soon after that I started doing small jobs. Then it happened that, I don't know where we call LJ, the director of this mm. institution. I don't know if he got my number, then I was just called, hey, we are looking for a plan by here. We have a, this problem and this, can you come and fix for us? And then you came? You did good, then good I did work, good. quick work. Yeah. 
Fix the problem. Fix the problem. And now you're here on staff. And now I'm here on staff. So I know you mean you've talked about it. So you you were here full time whenever I came to Kenya, and I was here for maybe a month. Yeah. And me and you, me and you started talking outside. Yeah. And then you told me that was the day that you realized I can I can just speak with Mzungus freely. <laughs> So explain to me, like, before that conversation, and then what made your mindset change on, like, what, what, just what changed? Before, before me and you had that conversation that day, yeah. how were you, how did you view Mzungus? Like, before I knew that Mzungus are not people to socialize with people easily, like. You said, so you've heard they don't, we don't socialize well. We don't well. socialize well. Yeah. Then, the way... Okay, then by that time, you know, I was, I I had never came across a Muzungu like I'm just talking to him directly yeah. like this. LJ was the first Muzungu for me. Mm. Then when you came, you were the second one. Mm. So my mentality was really different from what I got. Yeah, <laughs> things are different now. <laughs> things were really different. <laughs> Um, you know, back then we were just watching you guys on television, or maybe <laughs> you're passing somewhere, then a Mzungu passes in a car. Yeah. It was hard to even shake a Mzungu's hand. Really? So our, my, my mindset personally was I was thinking about like weird things about you. Like, yeah, like what? Just <laughs> tell me. <laughs> Speak freely. <laughs> if you say a Mzungu, then you're like, hey, this. This guy is just looking looking at me like a monkey. Or like a monkey? Something. Yeah, like, really? because I'm black. <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you think that? No, because I was looking at you guys to yeah. see if you are special. Really? I was wow. trying to also think the way you are thinking. Like, what, what do you, did someone tell you that's the way that that white people thought or is that just but, something you just developed yeah it's something that i, I just developed because wow we are different wow. then uh, there are some stories that there's there's some stories that i was hearing when i was still small the way mzungo usually harass people in the states wow that's so small. bad I mean, like, when think i about met you and lj yeah. my mindset shifted shifted completely uh, well, that's good. I'm glad that you don't yeah, think that I'm thinking. I've never <laughs> met a good friend, a good Mzungu friend like Bryson. <laughs> yeah, we become good friends. We eat dinner together every night. Yeah. I don't think there's a day we go without hanging out. And nowadays I'm free to even more than I'm free to other black people. Yeah, yeah. We're just like, we become brothers for sure. Like, we, I don't know, everything is just comfortable now. Yeah. I talk to you like I would talk to anyone yeah. else. Like I said, you eat dinner here. Oh, you're Uncle Vinny now. <laughs> Uncle Vinny. Uncle Rowan. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, so we just started that conversation that day. I don't even remember. I just know you were working, and I just walked by to talk for a few minutes. Mm. And then I got the gym. We started lifting together. Yeah. And then I think since the gym, we were, just, yeah, we were eating together every night, and now it's just... At first, I was like, hey, Vinny, you coming to dinner? Now, I just tell Anna, hey, go make sure you cook for Vinny because you know he's coming. <laughs> like, it's just, that's just who, what we do now. Like, we just we just do life together. Mm -hmm. And then even with Kamal, like, we just expect, oh, they're coming here to eat dinner. It's just, it's gotten, like, we're very comfortable. I guess that's the only way to put it. We've gotten very comfortable with each other. Mm -hmm. But I think you've done a lot for me to become your friend because... I know for Amzungu to be a friend with black, Amzungu is supposed to be more social. More so. Why do you think that is? Like, mm -hmm. why, why, why do you think it makes the separation? What I think that makes the separation is because of the, our mindset. Yeah. And maybe you are color, like we are black and you are white. So. <laughs> what is that? It's just skin. <laughs> it's just skin. Uh, so you know the sometimes... States? We fear, yeah. we fear most of white, white people. We believe that they are rich, our levels can't, our, 
our financial levels or our levels, our standards yeah. can't reach you as well. I don't know. I wish there was a way we could fix that problem. But you've already fixed it. Right now I'm okay. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, moment I met you and the way we've been free to each other at least. Yeah. My mindset has been changed completely. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's r- You know, because I think the thing is, like you say, I, I want to fix a problem, so what is the solution? But I don't think that I don't I don't think we did anything. We just spent time together. Yeah. And that just it just came automatically. Yeah, yeah, it was it, it was easy. I don't think like for me, I don't feel like I put effort into becoming your friend. Like there was it wasn't work or mm-hmm. difficult. Like yeah. it was just it just happened naturally. Natural. But I think a lot of times, like even in the states, there's a lot of there's the media makes it look like there's more racism than there really is. But mm-hmm. there are racist people in the states. But I think most of it comes from people not just sitting down and having a discussion. Yeah. Not even with race, with all problems. Like people, a lot of times people will leave the church and they leave because they think, like, even like you, you said that no one told me that Mazungus behaved this way. Yeah. A Mazungu had never treated you that way. Yeah. You just developed that mindset. I think in the States, a lot of people will go to church and then someone maybe don't speak to them one week. Mm-hmm. And... That say, oh, that person didn't speak to me. What's what's their problem? And maybe maybe they're thinking this about me, and maybe they're saying this about me behind my back. Maybe they feel this way, mm-hmm. but the thing is, they're just they're creating all of this. When in reality, that person maybe didn't see them, or that person just was having a bad day. Like that person was sick. There, you know, there's a million things, but we'll sit back and create problems that aren't there. For me and you, there's no separation. There's no issues. But just a simple not spending time together or not having discussion made you think I can never be friends with that guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but for me, I'm just I don't I don't know. For me, I just I think making friends is easy. Yeah. I'll force you to be my friend, even if you don't want to be. We will be friends. <laughs> you are social. Yeah, yeah. Like I think that's a, definitely a gift that God gave me. Yeah, as being that's social. why you're making more friends in Kenya. Yeah. I made a lot of friends. Yeah, a hundred and three of them, <laughs> not including us here. Mm-hmm. So if all Muzungus can be that, can be that social like yeah. you, I think our mindset will change, and we won't have those in a mindset again. Well, you know, it's even the same on our side. Like I was told coming to Kenya, like you better be careful if you walk outside, someone's going there. They're going to rob you. They're going to steal everything. And you know, there's been a couple of people who have tried to rob yeah, me, yeah. but it's very, I walk outside every day. I've been in Kenya for a year and I've had like three people try. And even it wasn't very bad attempts. It's not like they were holding me at gunpoint. They just came and were putting pressure on me. But, you know, for the most part, I ha- I've even not quarreled with very few people in Kenya. Mm. Those, the last three guys that tried to rob me, and then those guys the other day who were just just rude. And those are all like ninety nine percent of people that I run into in Kenya are some of the nicest people yeah. that I've ever met. It's even like you know in the states we're told that like Muslims are just like very rude and like they're they just blow things up like really that's what we're that's what we're taught. But here I've met so many Muslims who are very nice people, but I've People, they just, again, like how you were with, with Mzungus, we're, we're taught to where we, I've never met, a, I've never met a Muslim, I've never talked to one, but this is what someone told me, a story I heard, so that's how they are. But some of the Muslims that I've met in Kenya are some of the nicest people I've ever met. Uh, it's the point, it's, just, it's the point of just the mindset. Yeah. And what you hear from another person. Yeah. yeah. So it spreads, then it becomes like, it's true. Yeah, not coming to understanding yourself. I think it's the same with people who aren't Christian. They think Christians are judgmental. They think that they're hypocrites. They think that all, all these different things, but they're not taking time to even to even try mm. to get to know. They're not taking time to to experience it for themselves. Yeah, I think I think it's a big problem in the church too. Mm. I was having a discussion the other day about it. Like people will get in the mindset of. Like I can color my hair blonde 
or I can color my hair, you know, brown. But if I color my hair, if you color your hair pink, then that's a sin. <laughs> how does that? How does that make? You're coloring your hair. <laughs> uh, how does that make sense? But if you sit back and you think, yes. you know, it's it's not that those people are are mean. It's just they've never taken the time to sit back and let me think for myself. Let me think for myself. Yeah, no. If you, I can color my hair red, but if you color your hair pink, that's a sin. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense, but people are just, like I said, they don't take time to experience or to learn for themselves. They just do what they're told or believe what they're told. Yeah. Like me, I was, I thought Muslims were just evil people, evil. And then uh, there's been several days that I've been walking in town and, and a Muslim stopped me and, and just have a good conversation for a second. Just, mm-hmm. they're not, they're like, yeah, they're, they're lost. They don't know Christianity. They don't know Jesus. They're lost. But they're not, they're not mean people. And I just I think that if we would take time to, to open our minds just a little bit, spend time with people that are different than us, because we always, even on one of my last videos, I said we always go back to what we know. I was talking about coming to Kenya, I started drinking passion juice, but I went back to orange juice, which is what I drunk since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I think we always just go back to what we know. If we walk into a room and half the room is blacks and half the room is whites. You you are going to go to the blacks. <laughs> Me, I'm going to go to the Do whites. It. And it's not that I don't like black people. It's not that you don't like white people. It's just we go to, to, as soon as we see something that's similar, we're going to go. If we walk into a restaurant and someone is watching football over here and someone is watching UFC, <laughs> me and you are going to split because we're, uh, you're going to watch football, I'm going to watch UFC. And it's not that... Oh, I like the people watching UFC more. It's, I'm going to go to what's familiar. Mm-hmm. Even I think if it was black people watching UFC, and if it was white people watching football, I think you would go to the whites then, and I would go <laughs> because it, it, we just look for something that's the most, it's the most similar. And so I think whenever you meet a stranger, and the only thing you can see is the color of their skin, you just see something that's similar, so it makes you just a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. But if you can find, like, hey, we're wearing the same shirt, it makes the conversation easy. Because, hey, we're similar. There's something. If you see them with, a, with the same watch, it makes conversation easy. Because we just look for something that we can hold on to. And I think that at first glance, if we can't find anything, we just go back to, oh, we have the same color skin. So there's something there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that, like I said, a lot of people, the reason that they have so many issues is, they're they're not okay going to something that's not familiar. They're uncomfortable with the unknown. Mm. But for me, I just like getting to know people. So I think that's why it's been a little bit more easy for me. If I don't know something, I'm gonna find out. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, like we got off track for a little bit, mm. but we were talking about your story. You came you came here. You've got a job. So what's what's next for you? What is what is your your dream? What are you working towards? Yeah, so far I'm working towards maybe opening a business, having some something that can also bring bring in the money. Yeah, bring money. <laughs> so you're a plumbing business. Yeah, of course. Uncle I'm Benny's a, plumbing. I'm a plumber and daughter of thinking about. Uh, is opening a plumbing business mm. where I can employ myself and also at least it will make me to grow. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Everyone, um, opening a business I think is everyone's dream. Yeah. Doing what you're, you're passionate about and making a living off of it. Yeah. And I chose on plumbing because I have passion in plumbing. Yeah. And I think that's the only thing that I can do. Yeah. Maybe to achieve my goals. Yeah, I've seen a new passion in you lately, though. When I first came here, huh. you even told me you didn't read the Bible. Yes. But then we started men's fellowship. And even I didn't have any Bible at all. Yeah, you never even owned the Bible. But we started men's fellowship, and I've noticed you, you've you helped take ownership of that. And when we need to pass out soda, you're there mm-hmm. passing out soda. When we need to give out mandazi, you're there. Pass out Unga, you're there, and then even you're you're sharing now. You prayed out loud for the first time, you know. You you've really started, and even 
A lot of people don't come to church here, but you're, there's very rare a Sunday that you miss. Yeah. So as far as the ministry side of things, what what do you see yourself doing? Beside the beside the ministry. Yeah, whenever you do ministry, what kind? I think. Okay, let me just say the way ministry has helped me first. Yeah, for sure. Because back then it was hard for me to read the Bible. So my relationship with God, I can say, it was very bad. Because for a man, staying like the whole month not reading the Bible, not even giving yourself time with God. Yeah. Like, it's a mere since I came to Nairobi, I can sincerely say the truth that I've never went to church. Mm. The first church that I went is when I came to Life Spring. Yeah. So, LJ invite, invited me for the church, then I started coming. So, then beside that, Bryson came, he introduced this mini of Bible fellowship. Mm, and I think this one, it's making making me to learn more about God because there you are in men's fellowship, people are discussing any point that someone raises is about yeah. the verse. And now it's helping me to know about God. And even my relationship with God right now, I can say, it's on a higher level. Yeah, for sure. Even I can but say. I can, I'm still yearning to be more than yeah. that one. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's why I like. I liked. I like helping. That's why. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see me being, trying to help you. Maybe if you're doing something for my fellowship, mm. maybe you want to. Share things. You want this and this one to get done. I feel like when I do that. At least I'm working for the God. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so for sure. That's how yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So if you you get a plumbing business, do you think that you could you could use that in the same way? Because you say you like helping. Yeah. So I could even see maybe boys that come from the same situation as you, because there's a lot of boys in Kenya, not even without a father, without parents. Mm helping those boys learn plumbing or helping helping guys on the streets that are you know struggling that didn't turn to the gym they did turn to drugs teaching those guys a trade and helping them yeah get actually, to able. actually that's my dream there are so many boys that we were learning with them in the same school mm. and right now they don't have even a job yeah sometimes they'll just call to check on me and ask me how man how man how my, I am doing We'll talk, then it reach a point they'll say, Hey man, we are not we are not in good position, like we are not yeah. stable. We need some we need something to do. If you maybe you come across a connection, yeah. can you please call us? But then you even can right, connection. Yeah, even right now they're mm-hmm. doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was thinking that when I get uh, when I, I get that business I can be able to employ many young people. Yeah, for sure. Because here in Kenya, it's hard for someone to um, to give you a job for plumbing. If you start asking you so many questions, mm. how, 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 okay, for how long are you experienced? For how long have you been doing this work? Yeah. What do you know? You know. And for those guys that come from up country, it's hard for them because. Yeah, for sure. Coming from up country to Nairobi is hard. In, in any work in Kenya, you have to have a connection. A connection. Yeah. Any work. So, for me, I would think that I'll be reaching those guys yeah. and trying to, even if they don't know the work, but they went to school to learn for that work. Yeah. I can just take them and show them the line. Because so, yeah. they have the ideas. It's yeah. just the skills, putting putting it down on the ground. Yeah. So I really like to help them. Yeah. Yeah. So doing your own plumbing business and helping young guys I mean, that yeah, came yeah. from the same place as you. Not exactly the same place. Yeah. But any guy that maybe he went somewhere and maybe someone told him, Oh, your job is bad and yeah. what and what. You yeah. know, for for you to be to know the work or to have experience, someone have to give a chance. 
to learn so definitely yeah. so if we keep on saying you are not experienced you are not experienced you are not experienced yeah. how will those guys go and how will yeah. they be able to feed their family so you think if you made if you made all that happen you that you would have your purpose in life yeah, yeah actually 100% yeah that's what it's about but we're running out of time. SD card is almost full. But guys, again, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm about to be back in the States, so I look forward to trying to connect with a couple of you guys. I would really love to grab some people to jump on an episode with us and talk about your dreams, your plans, and your purpose. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you next time on the Hitchhike Hello Podcast.